Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a very impromptu, off-the-cuff, state-of-the-basement speech, I guess you could call it. Um, oh, where to start? One, excuse my appearance, just got out of the shower, and I've had a haircut, I'm way overdue for a haircut, and just kind of stopped shaving once the stay-at-home order was uh, put in place. It's starting to drive me crazy, but uh, I figure I'll shave when I can go back to work. Now, uh, I want to uh, address a few qu comments very quickly. One, um, when I say that I've had more time and I'm working on more projects, I am still working full time. We are very, very lucky. My heart goes out to those of you out there who are not able to work, who have fallen ill, know people who have, who have maybe lost some loved ones or friends. Um, I have been able to work full time from home. The main reason I've got extra time is I don't take a lunch break and I don't have a two hours of commuting. So, uh, that's great. Um, and uh, I don't know when I'll be going back to work exactly. I presume sometime in the next month or two. Uh, meanwhile, I will keep doing what I'm doing, which, uh, again, I had mentioned, on, I think, in the previous video. I'm trying to do like the bulk of stuff as quickly as possible while having some fun and trying to be entertaining, get stuff done for some clients. Uh, hopefully within uh, a few weeks I'll be clearing, uh, people will be able to come here and pick up their sets, free up some space, and then I got some fun things in store, I hope, some interesting things, some different things. I'll mention a few of those a little bit later. Oh, what to talk about next. I guess I'll address one of the trollish comments I got about uh, being a hoarder or this being a bunch of junk. Sure, one man's junk is another man's treasure. I can assure you this stuff has value. I know because I had to pay a bit to acquire a lot of this and I have sold some of these sets for a fair amount. So uh, several for over $1,000 a pop. There are some people who appreciate these sets. Um, as far as the hoarding factor, yeah, if I see a good deal, I'll take it. I am tight on space. Um, often when I get a, a set, it's a package deal. Sometimes at an auction. You can't take one set, you got to buy the pallet of them. So now they go to an estate sale and they've got uh, half a dozen old TVs in the basement. Or recently, um, the last kind of batch I got, it was a guy who was tearing down a house. And when he went through it, he found sets in the basement, in the attic, and whatever. And it was like, either I was going to take them or they were going to throw them away. One thing I can guarantee you, one, a couple things. One, where do you get spare parts for these vintage TVs? Rare occasion, you might find a new old stock replacement park on eBay. Or maybe you can do find another collector who's got a spare part. Um, the Early TV Foundation in Ohio has a classified section. You could ask around. But generally speaking, the way you get parts is from another old set, just like with old vintage car collectors. I mean, you gotta sometimes fabricate one, but often you get them by cannibalizing another set. So, yeah, I've got a number of spare chassis, like you saw the recent predicted ones. Why? Because I might need spare parts, and when I see a, a reasonable price, uh, I get it. Same with pitcher tubes. Yes, I've got a little stash of pitcher tubes because one by one, these all these pitcher tubes are going to die 100% guaranteed. And replacements uh, can be difficult to come by. So, again, I, when I see them, I take them. Call me a hoarder. I don't care. It doesn't offend me in the least. My plan, I've also been asked, what do I do with these sets? Some of these sets already belong to somebody else. I'm restoring them for them. And whenever they're able to, uh, they'll pick them up. And then I'll free up some space down here. The, most of the rest will get sold. 90% of them I intend to sell. I'm still fairly young, healthy. I intend to be at this for many more years. And one by one by one they will get restored and sold. A handful I will keep. At least for a while. Until something better comes along, or I get bored with them, or somebody else wants it more than, than I do. Uh. Back to the topic du jour, state of the basement. So, in between doing projects, I have actually gradually kind of been cleaning things up and organizing a bit. So, I did a video on sorting resistors. I should probably do one on capacitors, too. I've, I've got them somewhat sorted. 
a long time ago. I got several recommendations. I got some acro bins. I have. I have also got a wall mounting plate for them. I need to figure out the best place to put it. Maybe over there, or more likely over there. And uh, that's a it's a metal plate with special kind of hangers to to clip these bins onto. Um, they're plastic bins for putting parts, and they come in different sizes, different colors, and handy things to have. And tubes. So my eventual plan is to clear <laughs> clear this stuff out. Some of these shelves are here when we bought the place, and I do not like them. I do not want them here. I want to eventually pull all this stuff out, put good shelves maybe all along the right side, and put all of my tubes there sorted numerically, I suppose, from zero zero tubes uh, on the upper left to like one seventeen Z fives or something down here, because um, I waste way too much time looking for tubes. Now for a brief update on the ongoing projects. So, Producta Siesta, a really nasty one covered in half an inch of nicotine. Here's an original ad I picked up off of eBay. I think I'll get this framed at some point and put it next to the set. It's a nice thing to do. It also shows the uh, Safari, which I also have. I never got a 17er though. Anyways, so what's going on with this? Well, I finished both arms using the uh, hot uh, propane torch and brass bristle brush technique and then clear coated with lacquer. Turned out pretty nice. Uh, electrically, it's been restored with the exception of the fried linearity control. I've been playing around with a few options, sketched out some possibilities to make a more reliable circuit. We'll talk about that later. Button it all back up, and then in this box, we've got a type of uh, methyl base, methyl chloride, something or another, acrylic plastic. I want to do some tests on with a totally shattered protector screen to see if it can be wicked in to make these cracks less visible. So that'll be a fun, interesting thing. Otherwise, uh, it's pretty close to being done. Similarly, the Holiday also scored an original ad for it, and this one shares a lot of what are sometimes called the oddball, the other predictors, the ones in full console cabinets. That one is especially hard to find. Another odd angular cabinet. I've never seen any of these in person, I certainly don't have any. Anyways, holiday, yes. It also has been electrically restored, working fairly well. Aside from a pitch or two that I rejuvenated, we'll see how well that holds up. Need to do cabinet work. And uh, I did finish both arms on this one as well. These were sprayed with metallic paint. Also looks kind of nice. Sorry about the horrible lighting over here. So again, Cosmetic, reassembly issues, and something else. And then there's the protective screen cover that was so moldy and disgusting and nasty when I got the set. I've done several rounds of cleaning on it, and it's pretty good. But it still has some blemishes and some scuffs. And I did wet sand it down to 1500 grit, and I still got some super fine scratches. So I thought... I would finally take some advice I've gotten from several of you to try the 3M Headlight Lens Restore Kit. So I ordered one up today. We'll give that a try. Now if I hadn't made it clear, let me reiterate, or state more clearly, my reason in doing these two crazy in-depth predictive projects was for several reasons. One, to keep myself and you all entertained and sane during this pandemic situation. Two, to try out a bunch of suggestions that I've received over the years and things I've wanted to try out myself. Uh, and um, three, to give you everything I got. Because after <laughs> Siesta and Holiday are done, I do not intend to ever do a crazy in-depth predictive video again. 
But the reason I'm showing you this set is I certainly do have several more that need to get restored. What my plan is, is to use those techniques that I kind of honed and tried out on the Siesta project to blow through these quickly and efficiently. I'll show you. I'll show you the before and after and anything interesting that comes up, but I'm not going to go blow by blow with 20 part uh, <laughs> restoration series on these. What else? Well, one, long overdue, we're going to talk about what's inside this box. And it directly relates to the radio it's sitting on top of. Love it or hate it, we're going to be talking about this radio again. We will also be getting back to the GE800, never fear. It's fairly close to be ready for a first power-up. Now as for something a little bit different, I do intend to get back to the Delmonico transistorized portable TV. I did order up all the parts for this, low voltage electrolytics and plastic film caps. So I expect that to be a challenging, interesting, and very different project, especially since the service info consists of a one-page schematic, and that is it. And then there's this guy that just arrived a few days ago. It's a chassis for an Admiral 19A11, and you see a Canadian version behind it. I attempted to restore one of these a few years ago and kind of gave up in frustration. I kind of think it had a shorted winding of the power transformer. Well, I've since accumulated a few odds and ends of these. I want to make one good working version of this set. And I think it might be a fun project to do like in one shot. Friday night restoration style. Cause it's a pretty simple set as TVs go. See, there's only one can electrolytic up here, electrostatic CRT, very, very straightforward design, very reliable, I've heard it referred to as the best of the 7-inch electrostatic TVs. I'd like to see one working well for myself, <laughs> to judge for myself. I think I got enough bits and pieces to finally make that a reality. Oh, and then there's several projects, buried, you can't even see them, they're in the back row, that I started several years ago, and they're almost done. I've got lots of footage on that that you'll be getting to see when I get around to it. And then after that, when everything is caught up, I think I will put out a poll. See what you guys want to see me finally get around to, either starting on or finishing off. We got the RCA 222. We got the K-Part... Also known as a Farnsworth, uh, I think it's a 610P. We got the old Westinghouse WR8, I've done some work on, but certainly got a lot more to go. Oh, what else? Oh, the 16 inch Zenith Portal. The Silver Tone 10 inch set with the push button tuning. One of the first sets Sears ever sold. We've got the Philco 643 high-end farmhouse radio I got a million years ago, but never really got into it. Had been struck by lightning. Uh, got it, well, long story, but <laughs> that will be an interesting project to get to. Philco 90, heavily, heavily modified. Be an interesting project for sure. Also probably take a lot of work. GE802, one of GE's first sets. Needs a ton of work, but a very cool set. The Philco. The Philco from 1941, the 41316 that works off the Philco RF remote control. It'd be cool to see one of those really working in the flesh one of these days. Oh, uh, so 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 many fun things and some stuff you guys don't even know about that I've had squirreled away for years that we'll get to someday 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 all right I think that's enough blabbing for now I hope you enjoyed this little state of the basement video